So I have a question. How do we build a for-profit peace organizations? So we know that we have a military industrial complex, and you know, the long version is the military industrial think tank, congressional, whatever complex, especially in the United States, but also Europe and so on. And we know that we have this because it's profitable. It's profitable to make money with war. That's a, that's a, very, it's a very easy one. And then these different institutions, they interlink, and then you have this, uh, this dynamic where people who work in the military industry that make all of these weapons of uh, horrible, horrible proportions then become uh, uh, think tankers and they, the revolving door with, uh, uh, with the government. Uh, we know that. Now, why is it that we have a military-industrial uh, complex that makes war, but we don't have a peace-industrial complex that, that creates peace, that creates stability? Uh, because, a serious question, um, you know, peace is profitable too. The history of war and peace is also a history of a lot of countries and institutions fighting for the right to do business while others do war. I mean, peaceful times are way more, are way more uh, profitable for a lot of people than, than is war. War is profitable only for a small group. And probably there lies the answer. I mean, in political science, the so-called collective action problem is well known. If you have a small group of people that have a lot to win or a lot to lose, compared to a big group of people that has relatively little to win or little to lose, then the small group will be hell-bent on doing everything it can in order to get politically and socially its way. Right? It's the reason why the Zionists, the Zionist lobby, that is relatively small. There's only a few people that are Zionists, but they have a lot to lose. Um, so they will do whatever they can in order to um, protect their, their interests. And that's why they have an outsized outsized influence. It's the same with every lobbying group that, you know, uh, will, try to, will, tie, will try to influence politics because they have a lot to lose if these poli uh, policies go wrong. Um, and probably, probably with the military industrial complex, we have the exactly, the exactly same thing going on, that these warmongers the, and the, the producers of these implements of war, they have a lot to lose if they're, if they're implements were induced, especially, especially in the US. And then we have a dynamic that leads to these uh, forever wars of the United States, where war itself becomes a goal because it, it creates the demand for the weapons that this, uh, that this capitalist system produces. The point that I don't get is, or I get why that happens, but my question is how do we use the principles, the mechanisms of capitalism in order to fight that. So we see, for instance, how the... Um, wait one second, I need to cross here without getting hit. Um, <clears throat> we see how the whole idea of peace work, you know, being an NGO that, that tries to do peace and so on, the ideas of these things is always A, that they are NGOs and that they're not for profit, and B, that, you know, you're supposed to be relatively poor. Now this, <laughs> Mother Teresa, right? Mother Teresa, this perfect angel of goodness, and she was very poor, and uh, she's lauded as, you know, the good, a good Christian. Um, ooh, police going after somebody. Um, if we <laughs> don't change that paradigm, if we don't change the paradigm that peace work can be profitable, then we will never get the size that we need in order to pacify this uh, MIC. So we need a civil industrial complex that actually lobbies strongly for peace and for peaceful, um, for peaceful solutions of conflict and against warmongering. How, how, do, we, how do we create that um, if the, the collective action problem works against us? So the question is, how do we make peace work profitable? A capitalist approach to, you know, uh, to, to anti-war policies. Because, um, like, you know, the, the institutions, there are good institutions also, especially in the US, that, uh, 
that work on peaceful, realistic, and reasonable um, um, policies for the U.S. I mean, the Quincy Institute is one. The um, John Quincy Adams Society is another one. <laughs> Uh, I, I think I think that's what they're called. Um, we have we have several NGOs. Of course, we have Code Pink and so on. All of these these NGOs that um, try to do good work, but they all suffer also from this uh, problem that they need funding, and the funding is usually donations. Um, we have no, and, and and once you have donations as your funding source, you are funder funder dependent. If you do or say something that the funder doesn't agree with, then they will cut off the funding and you're gone. And it's not just um, peace NGOs that have that problem. The, um, the, the United Nations, right? Uh, the US is now threatening to cut off funding to the, to the UN if it uh, accepts uh, Palestine, if the uh, UN General Assembly accepts Palestine as a state. So this, this funding dependence is an issue on several levels. The way that capitalism works against this is that it says, well, the people who produce something, they produce an, a good that a lot of people want, therefore the people buy it, and then the buyers, the customers themselves, are the funders of the good that they get. And therefore you're not dependent on outside sources. Um, I don't know how to sell peace in that way, although peace is good for all of us, and anti-warmongering policies are good for us, but they are, they are, I, don't I don't know how to, how to make them marketable. How to make this marketable? Um, or, or how to produce something that can be literally bought on a market and that then becomes the source of funding for the peace work. Um, and that is linked, hard, a hard link, not a soft link in form of, oh, this guy produces tissue papers and then he became rich and then he uses those riches in order to fund an NGO. No, not, not, not that one. Direct link. The more people buy product X, the more funds are available for uh, peace work, or peace policies, why? I don't know, like, you know, and it, it needs to be a practical solution. And the best thing would be if you don't write, don't just write the solutions into the comments, if you actually started implementing them. I mean, if somebody has a brilliant idea, they should start implementing it and start making money with it, right? For profit, peace work, because the good thing about that, if it works, it should be contagious, right? And then more and more people should want to do that. Not necessarily because they want peace, but because they want money. <laughs> so how can, we, how can we use the greed of the capitalist system in order to work toward um, pacifist policies in the US and in Europe and worldwide in general? If you have ideas, do write them into the comments. And if you have a brilliant idea, do start a for-profit peace, uh, peace company. And we need to try to build this civil industrial peace complex. Otherwise, we're not we're never gonna get the the momentum and all of the the gears to to interlink in order to bring us away from this constant horrible bullshit warmongering that we are seeing on a daily basis. Um, let me know what you think. Thanks.